Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're just going to pick up right where we left off here. We've already completed parts A and B of this exercise. And so now we're just going to jump into part C. Uh, so we're looking for if a randomly selected person uh, states, forgive the typo there, uh, states that they obtained part-time employment, what is the probability that they studied science? So what we're looking for here this is now the conditional probability. So conditional that they obtained part-time employment, what's the probability that they studied science? So the notation, it's actually a little, the notation is backwards compared to how you would say it. Uh, it's conditional on having part-time employment. What's the probability that they studied science? So the way that you would read this is what's the probability that an individual studied science given that they have part-time employment. Okay, so that's how you would read this, um, this statement. Now, how can we calculate that? Well, let's ignore the joint probability table just for now. Uh, and, and we have the luxury of having the numbers. Sometimes when you're working on these types of problems, all you'll have are the probability tables. Uh, and so you'll have to work with that. And we'll, we'll lead up to that. But here we have the luxury that we've got the actual data itself. So first of all, given that they're part-time. So what that means is all I'm interested in is this information here. Okay, they're part-time employment. Okay, so that's, I don't need to worry about anything else. Now, what is the probability that they studied science? Well, out of those people who, who obtained part-time employment, 18 of them uh, studied science. So having the numbers here, the calculation is relatively simple. It's 18 people uh, out of 77 part-timers. So there's a total of 77 part-times, 18 of those part-timers uh, studied science. And so that probability then is 18 divided by 77, uh, 23, 0 0.23. So it's fairly straightforward. We isolate, okay, I'm, I'm told that we're only looking at part-time, so I'm only going to consider those part-time values. What's the probability that they studied science? 18 out of 77, 0 0.23. Okay, that's, that's not uninteresting. Now, how do we get the probability discussion, you know, using our joint probability table? Well, consider you go to your formula, uh, formula sheet and you have something that probably looks something, something like this. That, that, that conditional probability is an intersection, so it's the probability that they're part-time and studied science divided by the probability that they are part-time. Okay, it's something along along these lines. So how can I translate these two pieces of information? How can I kind of reconcile uh, what we're doing here? Well, if I change my calculation ever so slightly and say, well, 18 divided by 193 and 77 divided by 193. Well, in this calculation here, well, those 193s in the denominators, they, they just cancel out. They don't really affect the, the calculation whatsoever. But 18 divided by 193, right, that's 18 divided by 193, that is how we obtained that joint probability, or in this case, that intersection between part-time and science. So if we were to apply that formula, that would be 0 0.09 was that intersection. And then what's the probability of being part-time? Well, that's the 77 divided by 193. 77 divided by 193, here that was 0.4. And so if we calculate this, subject to some rounding error, I suspect, divided by 0.4, I have, there's a little bit of rounding, roughly 0.23. Okay, so we get effectively the same result with the exception of some rounding error in there. 
Okay, so that's that's really all there is to it. So for this, for part C, uh, we have 0.23 is the probability that given that you've told me uh, that you uh, are part-time, 23% uh, chance that you studied science. Okay, now if we go on to part D, let's go through this in the same manner again. So part D, if a randomly selected person states that they obtained full-time employment, what is the probability they studied business? So what's the probability that you studied business given that you obtained full-time employment? So again, if we go to having the luxury of the, 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 the actual data, I can see, okay, I'm, I'm isolating my analysis here to full-time. So I'm only looking at the full-time um, graduates. So I have 23 of those full-time graduates studied business. So that's 23 out of a total of 116 who obtained full-time employment. So that's out of 116. And so here I can calculate that 23 divided by 116 and call it 0.2. We'll round that up to 0 0.20. Now, going through our, our little adjustment, let me clean this up a bit. If I were to say, well, what if we divide this by 193, divide this by 193, so if I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 193, well, now I have, this is the probability that they are both full-time and business. So this is that intersection between full-time and business divided by this 116 over 193. This is my probability that they are full-time. There's my probability that they are full-time. Now, if we substitute in those probabilities, so here I had a probability, that intersection between full-time and business. So that's over here. That was a probability of 0.12 divided by the probability of being full-time, 0.6. And now let's plug that into our calculator. And I have 0.12 divided by 0.6. And wouldn't you know it, our answer is exactly 0 0.20. So again, we see that it's consistent regardless of how we do it. Whether we have the raw data, it's quite easy. Uh, having the probabilities, I would say it's still straightforward. It's just understanding the nature of that relationship that can be a little bit more tricky. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do part E now. Just clean this up again. And so th this is nothing, uh, oh, let me put in my answer here for part B. So this answer was 0.2. And now, let me clean this up as best I can. Now we're going to look at, let's see, a randomly selected person states that they studied the arts. So now we're sort of going the other way. My eraser's not working. There we go. So this randomly selected person says they're studying the arts. What is the probability that they obtain full-time employment? Okay, so what's the probability that you obtained full-time employment given that you studied arts? Okay, coming back up here to our numbers. Given that we studied arts, so all I care about are these individuals who study arts out of them, what proportion obtained full-time employment? Well, I have 51 out of those 64 art students obtained full-time employment. So the probability that I select uh, out by random, given that you studied art, what's the probability that you obtained full-time employment? 51 divided by 64, uh, pretty high, 0.8. 0 0.80 uh, is that probability given that you studied arts there's a 0.8 or an 80% chance that you will obtain full-time employment again I'm going to go through this uh, you're going to be tired of this if we divide by 193 divide by 193 so that 
is my oops that is my probability that oops my probability that your full time and arts divided by the probability that you are in arts. So this is going to be equal to here's 0.26 divided by 0.33 and that is going to be where is my calculator point two six divided by point three three and that's a little bit more of a rounding in there, error in there but we're still in the right ballpark so let's say it's roughly zero point seven nine around point eight I'm going to allow a little bit of rounding error here that's fine it happens so this is going to be point seventy nine is that probability okay so there's uh, there's all of our conditional probabilities now I want to come back uh, and discuss just a little bit this multiplication law uh, it's not part of the problem so it's a little bit outside of the scope of the problems but what we've just done I think I've basically I think I've I've demonstrated this relationship so let's say uh, full-time given that you studied arts so this is the one that we just did this is the the intersection of full-time and arts divided by the probability uh, that you're in the arts so what this brings us to uh, is the multiplication law which is how do I obtain the intersection of two events and so what the multiplication law tells us multiplication law this is if I solve for that intersection so this would mean that intersection between F full-time and arts is equal to uh, the conditional probability times uh, the probability uh, oops times the probability that they're in arts okay and that's that's it that's our multiplication law so in order to obtain uh, the intersection of two events it's equal to the conditional probability uh, multiplied by the marginal uh, the marginal probability now if these are independent events so what that means if it's independent meaning the probability of being full-time uh, given that you're in the arts if it's independent then that means that it's it's not affected by whether or not you're in the arts so this this is what it would mean if these were independent is that the conditional probability uh, is no different than the probability itself so if uh, two events are independent well then I can just substitute this back into here and we'll find that the the intersection of two events occurring at the same time is equal to the product of their two probabilities okay so this little piece that I've done in pink here this is a bit of an aside this is outside of the scope of this problem um, but I figure it's all part of the same discussion so we might as well fit it in here so I hope that this makes sense uh, calculating these different conditional probabilities from joint probabilities um, you should get lots of practice and I've got a couple of videos uh, that will allow you to do that okay thank you very much for watching bye bye